This is the video presentation for the module English in the World, which is available to third year students, finalists, in the spring term. This course is all about how English has developed and is used around the world. We're looking at the development of English since the time of Elizabeth I. We're looking at historical, economic, educational and socio-political aspects, so we're not just looking at accent features. And this is not a course purely in historical aspects either. We're not looking just at the history, we're also looking at what English is doing now, how people are using it and how it's developing around the world. The aims of the course are to provide you with an understanding of the role of English language in the contemporary world. This is very, very important if you're going to go into business, international business, where you're dealing with overseas partners, for example, because English is used very differently around the world, and we need to be able to understand that in order to um, well work well together. It's also to locate this understanding in a knowledge of the historical, economic and social forces which have shaped the role. The textbook is Global Englishes by Jenny Jenkins. Um, this is the third edition of the book. Um, we'll also be looking at other texts as well, and I will be giving you reading to do every week. Um, there will be multiple choice tests online. We're going to be covering the social, historical and political context, pigeons and creoles, variation across Englishes, how English can be categorised, standard language ideology, linguistic imperialism, English as an international language and English as a lingua franca, the role of English in Europe and Asia, and the future of English as a world language. The format of the teaching sessions, well, they'll all be lectures, but they will be very interactive lectures. There's lots of activities to do um, from the textbook, lots of discussion, and the class works best when there's lots of classroom discussion. There's also going to be support on Blackboard, all kinds of things. I hope you find them useful and interesting. Assessment for the course. Um, there are four pieces of assessment. The first is an analysis of a variety of World English, where you look at grammar, phonology, vocabulary, etc. This is due in week 10 of the spring term. You also participate in a research project, and you have to do a reflective post thinking about taking part in the research project, what you've learned from doing it, whether you'd do anything different. So it's really reflecting on research. So this is a good example of research-led teaching. Oh, I'm losing my ear. You also do weekly multiple choice tests on Blackboard from required reading. And there is a two hour examination in which you answer two questions from a selection of five or six. So English is spread around the world as a means of communication. And traditional native speakers of English have basically lost control of it. It's something which is changing so much that it's, it's not in the control of native speakers anymore, unless we're talking about language tests, where native speakers still have some control over what's going on. So we don't only have our own regional and social variation to deal with in the UK, there's also regional and social variation arising from English used all over the world. And that's one of the things that makes it really, really interesting. So what does count as English? When is English not English? Do we consider a pidgin or a creole based on English to be a type of English? How do we codify and categorise new Englishes? How do we decide when something is a bona fide variety of English? So if we've got British English, American English, if these are accepted as varieties, what about Indian English, Singapore English, Hong Kong English? Can we judge the use of English in other countries when we can't always understand our own countrymen? You must have spoken to somebody from somewhere in the UK where you couldn't understand them. There's also socio-political and economic angles. So for lots of speakers around the world, English is a tool to a better job. It's a way of improving yourself and improving your job prospects. Lots of countries have tertiary education in English. So people go to university and study through English as a medium of instruction, even though it's not actually a language that is a first language in the country, for example. English is used in China, for example, between speakers of different varieties of Chinese, which sounds a bit strange, but I have seen it happen. 
So is English a killer language in a British and American and a world context, is it? Or is it a language which is facilitating social movement and economic progress? And do the advantages of having English outweigh the disadvantages which include the fact that people are not using other languages as much as they might have done? Useful books for this include the course text, but also um, things produced by David Crystal, English as a Global Language, David Gradol, um, who's written a number of different items on um, World Englishes and the Future of English, and also John Wells's book, Accents of English. This uh, was produced in 1982, so it's quite old, but it's basically the Bible on anything to do with accent variation in English, whether we're looking at the British Isles or beyond. I really hope to see some of you on this module. I think you'll get a lot out of doing it, a really good understanding of how language, our English language, is used around the world. And when I say our, I'm talking about it being the language of everybody that uses it, really. It's a fascinating module, and students always enjoy it and always come up to me and say how much they've really learned a lot about it. And it will um, give you a head start, I think, if you're going into situations where you're having to do business in international contexts.